Hello and welcome to the Lupin Bar podcast, uh, episode 5. It is a week late because I was supposed to do this last week. Um, but I'll, I had quite a stressful week. Um, not the one just gone. I've had a lovely week, the one just gone. Um, but the week before that was really stressful. Um, and then the weekend was really busy because Avion and I went away. And, um, and then throughout the week I just, uh, I don't really get the opportunity to do a podcast um, in the week. Um, it's better if I do it over the weekend. So we're a week late, but never mind. It's only two weeks since my last podcast, um, as opposed to previously when I've left it for three weeks. But I've got lots to show you, and I should really tell you who I am, just in case it's your first time watching the podcast. So, my name's Kate, and I'm coming to you from North Wales in the UK. Um, in case you don't know, I live on a dairy farm with a dairy farmer, um, Avion. And my dog, who is asleep somewhere in the house, she's not with me in the room today. She's not really... She's only ever been on the podcast once, very briefly. She tends to just chill out somewhere in the house while I'm doing this, so... Um, I'm on Ravelry as Lupin Bar, it's all one word. And I'm on Instagram as Lupin Bar. Um, I don't think I've done very much this week on Instagram. I can't remember if I've put very much on there at all. Uh, but I, I am quite active on Instagram. Um, I definitely like to go on there and see what other people are doing and like a few things and make a few comments here and there. So um, even if I don't manage to put a photo on, I'm, I'm, I'm usually looking um, every day on Instagram. So you can, I love it when I get a comment on there as well. So yeah, it's a nice place to come and say hello. Um, um, so this week I'm going, I think I'm going to just dive right in because sometimes I spend about 10 minutes at the beginning of each podcast talking about stuff um, and so far I haven't managed to do a podcast that it is under one hour and I think I'd like to try to make it a little bit shorter this week. Um, not because I've had any complaints or anything like that, but, um, well, I don't know. I just thought it might be a bit neater if I try to get it in just under an hour. Maybe it'll be less. Maybe it'll be less. I'm just thinking what I've got to show you. I don't know. I know I can talk a lot, so it'll probably be more, again, knowing me. So, anyway, um, uh, I'm going to dive right in. Um, I'm going to start with the Welsh word. Usually I do that at the end, but I'm just going to slip it in at the beginning this week because it's only really quick. Um, and then I've got a little bit of progress on a couple of wicks to share, knitted knitted works in progress. I'm looking at my list here. A um, couple of finished things to show you. Um, I'll just tell you a little tiny bit about my week, but I won't do lots of that. And then I've got some new things to show, um, and a mystery whip, which I'm going to leave until near the end, um, just to mix it up a bit, keep it a bit interesting. Uh, favourite favorite object from the house, um, and that's, in, I can't wait to show that because it's inspired by um, another podcaster. Again, last time I showed one inspired by a fellow podcaster and lovely new friend of mine. Um, but this is, this object is, um, well, same again, but a different podcaster. So, and I think that's it. So I'll just dive in. So the Welsh word of the week, if you don't already know, um, if you haven't watched this podcast before, I... Uh, well, I live in North Wales and Avion, who I live with, is uh, Welsh speaking. That's his first language. Um, we speak English because I don't 
I don't speak Welsh, but I am, I have been learning it for the past two years. Um, I recently stopped going to my class, which was on a Monday morning, because it was three and a half hours long, at nine o'clock on Monday morning, three and a half hours of a language class. Um, it was okay in the winter, but in the summer, no way. I cannot sit in a classroom for three and a half hours, unless it was something like an art, a creative class. Um, I could sit in a knitting group, I could learn something creative, I could do a craft class for that long, but not a language class, I'm afraid. It just, uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't take it. <laughs> um, and I think the point at which I gave in, um, finally broke, was when spring arrived. Well, really, it's only just arrived, but it, it's only a few weeks since I gave up my class. Um, and the weather started getting warmer. We've had such a long, dark, cold, wet, well, not that cold, but wet winter. Um, I couldn't stand to waste, no, well, not waste, it wasn't a waste, but I just couldn't stand to be inside a classroom. Um, it was like a little meeting conference room. Um, and it didn't have any windows, and it was really, it was either freezing cold or really boiling hot and stuffy because nobody knew how to work the air conditioning. Um, and I just, I just couldn't sit, I just couldn't sit in there for three and a half hours. And I found that I could, I was either really restless and fidgety or falling asleep. Um, and a lot of the time just sort of angry inside that I wasn't outside in the garden. Because the rest of the week I have to work indoors, um, so, you know, yeah, it, oh, anyway, I just, I gave that up. It doesn't mean I'm not learning Welsh anymore, but um, I'm looking around for a different sort of style of learning it in a, a different course, so we'll have to see, but anyway, I hear it every day, um, Avion speaks it every day on the farm, and it's what most of the village speak, um, so I'm finding that, and what I have already learned, I'm hearing it and getting to that reinforced all the time. And because of all of that, and because of where I live and the, the culture of the Welsh language here where, I, where I'm living, I decided to share um, a Welsh word on the podcast every week, but make it related to textiles in some way. So, that, this should have been a really quick little segment. <laughs> The Welsh word, but I've just made that last about seven minutes somehow. Oh, well, never mind. So the Welsh word is, um, there are two words, but um, they kind of mean one thing, sort of. It's the singular and the plural. So it's for knitting needles. Hang on. I'll get a little visual for you. In case you don't know what a knitting needle is, <laughs> watching a knitting podcast. Knitting needles. <laughs> Right, so, let me, my friend helped me with this. I've got a lady in the village who I go and clean for once a week. Um, that's not my main job, but I do that once a week for this lady because I did it when I first got here. And um, when I got my main job, I didn't really want to stop going to Mai's house because she's so lovely. And I just thought it was good to have two jobs instead of one. So I still go and she's Welsh speaking and I had to get her to help me with this because Avion didn't know the answer because he doesn't knit. Um, he doesn't already always know really specific words in Welsh because he may not have ever really used them so he wasn't sure. So the Welsh word for knitting needles is, um, a pair of needles is gwell and one is gwell. So you just change that little sound in the middle. Um, and there's a different word for that kind of needle. Oh, take that out, that's not a needle. So that kind of needle is a nod with. So nod with, gwell. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was really loud. There's your Welsh lesson for the week. Um, okay, so I'm going to get on with some whips. So I've been madly working on one particular whip um, for the last two days, uh, ever since I watched Antonella's podcast a couple of days ago, and um, of the, Antonella does a podcast called The Diary of a Yarnaholic, and we've kind of, we've made friends through a cal that we're doing. 
um, over on Ravelry um, and we've been messaging each other and um, giving each other shout outs on our podcasts which is great. Antonella gave me an absolutely wonderful, really sweet, brilliant um, sort of shout out on her podcast, on her j- episode that she's just done so thank you Antonella that was really great absolutely brilliant fun hearing my name on your podcast I loved it um and Antonella you said on the podcast that you were looking forward to seeing my progress on the Andrea Andrea's shawl it's called and when I was when I watched the podcast when I watched your podcast two days ago I think it was um at that point I had not done anything more maybe just a few more inches um of the edging so for anybody who didn't see that um last week I was doing the I showed my new it was a new cast on the Andrea shawl by oh Kirsten Kapoor on Ravelry um and you start by doing by knitting um like seven a seven stitch lace repeat of a border, um, just a really long thin strip of a border, uh, of the edging, sorry. And then the next step is to um, pick up all of the stitches along one edge of that and then knit the border section, um, which is 16 rows um, backwards and forwards along the whole length or width of it of the shawl so at the point when I saw the podcast uh, Antonella's podcast and she said she was really looking forward to seeing my progress uh, I, all I had to show was about two more inches of what I'd already shown and I felt really kind of a very urgent sense of I've got to do a little bit more so I can show <laughs> but I think that's brilliant because it means um, when you get to know people in this podcasting community you sort of kind of cheering each other on and I think showing each other's progress, showing your progress on on projects um, and knowing that other people are interested to see really gives you um, loads of motivation to, to work on it as well. So you did it, Antonella, thank you very much. I'm going to get it. Um, so I'm going to give her a lot of the credit for, for the amount of progress I've made on this. I've been getting up early because it's the summer and I wake up a lot earlier in the summer, going to get a cup of tea bringing it back to bed and doing about half an hour on this shawl um, or maybe even an hour. I did an hour this morning because it's Sunday and then um, a little bit in the evening but mainly in the mornings and then today I sat outside on the grass because it's a beautiful day out there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Me and Charlie, my dog, sat outside on a blanket on the grass with the guinea pigs. Um, got some guinea pigs and they were outside as well in their new run. So we all sat together and I and I worked and worked and I really wanted to finish the border section of this shawl. Um, to show Antonella. So here we are. Um, I'll just show you it. Whoops, I did finish the border section. I'm really, really proud of myself. Really proud of myself. And this is a gorgeous thing to knit. I'm loving every single stitch of this. So this is what I've done so far. Um, so, so last week, last week, I don't really know how to show you this the best. Can I do that? Um, if you imagine that, or if you imagine that I've just got, oh, I can't. Oh, I don't know how to hold this. Sorry. This is the border section here, going up to my finger. That's what I've got done in the last couple of days. Um, before that, just this sort of inch here was what I was knitting. So then you pick up, I've picked up all the stitches along there and worked like bilio on that lovely border section. So you can see the lace stitches um, and you can probably see loads of, I was trying to get those to the back. These are my stitch markers. <laughs> I don't own any, st- I don't own one stitch marker not one proper one, um, I just make them out of tied up bits of yarn. Um, yeah, because I haven't got any stitch markers. Um, and I just fi- I just choose fine, fine yarn that's not too snaggy. Anyway, so there we go. And I've used stitch markers all the way along because the pattern is written into the pattern where to place all of your markers and the pattern 
um, tells you to place a marker between each lace repeat. Um, and I wish I'd done that on my other shawl that I'm going to show you, because if I had, Antonella, you did actually tell me to do this and I didn't do it. Um, because I thought I was a bit cocky and I thought, no, I'm doing fine with my lifelines. No, I was not. I still kept having to rip out loads of work, loads of knitting. Right, all of that work, I have not had to rip out, not even half a row. Um, I haven't even used a lifeline. <gasps> um, so <laughs> I might be tempting fate by telling you that actually, but um, I think that that shows the difference between having stitch markers at every lace repeat um, and not having stitch markers at every lace repeat, Kate, like you should have done on the canopy shawl. So um, this morning, after finishing this, and whizzing through it, just absolutely flying through it, because of the stitch markers, I think. I have now put stitch markers at every lace repeat in my next shawl that I'm going to show you, which is the canopy one. Um, and I'm absolutely 100% confident that that's going to go a lot faster now. So I'm going to work on that some more this afternoon, and hopefully by the next podcast you, I'll have lots of progress to show you on that. But anyway, so this is the Andrea shawl. And if you don't already know, I'm knitting it in the blue face Leicester, uh, sorry, in the Uncommon Thread um, yarn. It's a blue face Leicester single. It's 100% superwash. Um, color, color Attic Room. So yeah, I, I won't go into too much about that because I've showed it on the podcast before. But anyway, there's the yarn. There's the cake. I've still got all of that. I'm only on. I only bought two skeins. 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 Oh, I can never say that. Um, that's how much I'm. I've still got that much left of the second one. Um, and yeah. So I think the next. What you might actually. What you may be able to observe here is. This is the whole of the bottom edge of the shawl. I'll just go back a bit in my noisy chair and hold it up. Obviously it is a little bit wrinkled on the needle. Um, it's not at, quite at full stretch, but it's nearly at full stretch, which as you may be able to deduce, that's not very long for a shawl. Um, I'm carrying on anyway. The reason it's a lot smaller than I think, well, than the shawl measurements are supposed to be is because I'm using a much finer yarn weight and um, I didn't have the experience with shawl knitting to know before I started that I could have just added on a few more repeats to make it longer. I do now know that that would have worked and I would have had just a longer shawl so if I do it again in a similar weight yarn I'll just add on some more repeats to make a larger shawl. So I'm hoping this will at least make like a, a mini shawl sort of thing, but I'm just enjoying knitting it so much I'm just going to carry on. It's I'm, I don't mind at all that it's going to be really small. Um, I think as long as it goes around my neck a little bit, that's that's going to be absolutely fine. And the rest of the, I think it's quite um, stockinette stitch for the rest um, with the decreases. So anyway, there we go. For me, that is a lot of progress. Oh creaky chair, sorry, creaky chair again, um, yeah, one last, one last little look, I love it, I love working with the, um, I love working with this yarn, I love working, it's gorgeous, it's a single, I, I just absolutely love it, it's a little bit rustic, I love the colour, I love the texture of it, I just, there's nothing I don't like about this project, I, I love it all. Um, the needles, I'll show you those in a bit because it's, I've got a new needle set, so, um, but they're Addy, well it's Addy Clicks, I'll show you the set in a little bit because that's in my new stuff section, but um, Addy Clicks uh, lace set I bought, um, and they've got these brilliant, absolutely amazing, sort of doing a half showing you new stuff now, can you see the hole there, shall I put it somewhere else? against the white wall maybe and you thread a piece of waist yarn through there and then you knit along and it inserts a lifeline for you that is brilliant what an absolutely magnificent invention so 
So that was great. So I'm loving it. Love the needles, love the yarn, love the pattern. Love it all. Love the stitch markers. Um, so, I don't know if I showed you this project bag. I'll wait because I've got some FOs, um, some of that's sewn, some of it's project bags, so yeah. Um, right, so the next shawl is the canopy, if you haven't already guessed. Well, you didn't need to guess because I told you. Okay, so again, I've showed this already once before. Um, I think I had about that much done. I think, oh, I can't remember how much I had done last time I showed you. It's got grass on it because I've been sat outside. I cut the grass yesterday, day before yesterday, and it's all sort of dried and um, gone on my knitting. But never mind. So, again, got these on my Addy Clicks. And you're now going to see this. Minus a lifeline, which is a very, very risky gamble. Oh, there's loads of grass on it, never mind. Just excuse the grass, please, if you will. But loads of stitch markers just put in about an hour ago, ready for the next and last um, lace repeat, lace section. So I should have actually put this on a longer cable. Perhaps I'll try that. Um, I'll try and put it on a longer cable for you. Oh dear, I struggle with learning how to hold things. There we go, that's better. Okay, so, <sighs> I don't know what you can see. There's all my stitch markers, um, my little bits of um, yarn, knotted up yarn, and well, that's one half. There's the centre decrease there. So that's kind of how it's looking. That's the second lace repeat. There's the stockinette section. And I'm just about to do one more of these lace repeats. And then I think there's another stockinette section. And then there'll be an applied border. Um, this is part of a cal, um, <laughs> which is a May cal. It's the Mandarin's the name of the cow. Mandarin's shawl cow. If you look up Mandarin's of the pod, uh, Melody, it's Melody's doing the, the cow. Melody is from the podcast Mandarin's um, and she, I believe, is Mandarin's on Ravelry. So anyway, I'll put it here. I forget that I can just put things here if I've forgotten what, um, if I forget the details, I can just put them here. So it's the Mandarin's shawl cowl, um, and it's going on throughout May, which is nearly over. I think we've only got a couple more days of May left. There's no way I'm gonna get, even if I just knit on this and don't do anything else, I will not get this finished for the end of the cowl. Sorry, Melody. Um, I don't think she wanted anyone to feel under pressure to finish anything. I think she just wanted everyone to, everyone in it to really just relax, knit, enjoy, being in a cowl and knitting together. So I'm hoping that I've captured, definitely captured the spirit of that because I've met some really nice people in that cowl and it's been a really lovely cowl to be part of. Um, and still it is for, an, for another couple of days. Um, but I think if um, Melody, I don't know if she'll keep the thread open, um, but I'll still share the finished object on Melody's, um, on the Mandarin's Ravelry group anyway. So we'll see, but, uh, and of course on the podcast, so. Yeah, I, I had really hoped that I was going to get this. I actually really believed that when I started it at the beginning of May, um, that I could easily get this done. But because I started a couple of other things, um, and also because I can only, well, I think this is going to improve now, but so far I've only been able to work on this project when I've just been in this room, no podcast, no TV, nothing to distract me. I couldn't work on it if I was chatting to someone. Um, and I think that's limited the time that I've spent on it. So just because I've, it's my first lace um, project and um, there's a lot of lace instructions um, and it's purely because it's something that's new to me and I do, I, I have to really discipline myself to concentrate really hard um, using post-it notes to work my way down the pattern and using a pencil to mark off what I've done 
um, and I still manage to misread things. Um, it's just, I just skip sometimes, I skip ahead a bit too far and anyway, and then I end up having to rip back, so. But I am really hoping that now I've got these absolutely magical, wonderful markers, which Melody suggested another person do, and I did see that on the cowl, on the discussion thread on the cowl, and I don't know why I didn't take that advice as well. And Antonella did tell me, suggest to me, put stitch markers on every lace repeat. And I just thought, no, I'm all right, got lifelines, that's fine. Wasn't, I was not all right, and I kept having to rip back whole rows when I could have probably only just ripped back, say, six stitches instead of a um, hundred or something. So, well, five rows. Um, anyway, so there we are. The next time you see it, I'll just show you this, the lace a bit close up because it is a really, really beautiful pattern. I don't know why I didn't think to do that before. I don't know if you can see it. It's a really pretty, beautiful pattern. And it is coming... When I first started knitting this shawl, I was really um, worried in case the stitch pattern wasn't going to show through because of my choice of yarn, purely because of my choice of yarn. It's it's totally different style of yarn to the yarn that Melody recommends. Um, I've already said that as well, but... Um, but now that I've done the second lace section and it's a lot longer, it is really, um, you can see the stitch pattern really well. So I'm really relieved about that and I love the way it looks. And I am really, really looking forward to working some more on that a bit later on. Um, maybe a bit after the podcast, after I've done this podcast, because I think I'm going to get this done a lot quicker now. And I can't wait to get to the applied border because I've never done an applied border before. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I, at the moment, that project is sitting in this absolutely brilliant bag I got from Loop of London. Oh, hang on. Loop, Loop Knitting. Um, they're in Islington, I think. They're in London, anyway. Everybody will already know about Loop. Wherever you are in the world, I'm sure you'll know all about this absolutely brilliant, wonderful shop. And the last time I ordered... In fact, it was... Oh, no, I didn't get this yarn from there. Um, can't remember what yarn I got from them. Oh, it was, the, it was that. It was the Blueface Leicester. It was the Uncommon Thread yarn. When I ordered that yarn, this bag came for free with it. So that was really lovely. So I'm using that as a larger project bag. I'm really sorry about my chair creaking. I'd like to say I'll do something about it, but as I've said in previous podcasts, I probably won't. <laughs> because, um, yeah, I just I never remember to do it. Right, so... Um, that is, those are my whips. I've got another whip, but I'm leaving that till the end because it's a mystery whip. I'm doing something a little bit new. Um, and I'm going to show you something I'm working on. And I'm not going to tell you what the pattern is. Um, maybe some people will be able to guess. Maybe you know, that's a really boring thing and silly. And perhaps, you, perhaps everyone thinks I'm a bit of a geek. <laughs> but um, anyway, I thought it was fun. And I just thought it'd be fun to show a couple of stages of the progress and the yarn and then um, a couple of podcasts on I'll show you the actual finished object and uh, I don't know maybe some people will recognize it maybe you've even knitted it yourself um, I just thought it'd be really cute to do um, cute I just thought it'd be really um, well a little bit new to yeah show you a whip but not tell you what it is <laughs> cryptic <laughs> Um, so that's coming because it's sort of in new things as well because I can show the new yarn for that. Um, so, ooh, finished objects. I'll just have a quick drink. It's just juice today. With my two pounds co-op picnic child's cup so I don't spill my drink. Um, I finished the rug. Yes. Antonella actually mentioned my rug in her podcast as well and um, I also at that point I had not done anything else on it not one stitch so um, that's another thing I've been crazily working on um, a little bit in the evening I can do that in front of the telly a um, little bit where else have I done it well in the sunshine this morning um, uh, I did the whole of the pink section 
on the blanket in the sun with the dog and the guinea pigs and it was loads of fun and I finished it and amazingly I had that much yarn at the end so it it just worked out absolutely perfectly I've just got to stitch in the end but I wanted to show you how much I've got left so um, this is the, the crochet remake rug it used to be a circle it used to be like a big baggy crochet circle in individual stripes of of the three colours, so a yellow stripe, a blue stripe, a pink stripe, and it, it was all a bit crazy to me, and I couldn't fit it anywhere in the house. I didn't really like the shape, and it had loads of um, bits of stringy stuff sort of sticking out of it, which I've chopped out, stitched all the wool yarn together, and created something that I love, a much neater and more compact um, rug, which I, I cannot wait to put somewhere in the house and probably watch Charlie claim it and lay on it and never actually get to sit on it myself. But anyway, here it is. I'll go back and then I can show you it. Ta-da! So that's the finished work. Can I stand up to show you? No, oh, I'm better off staying back a bit. Yep, so you can see, you've got an idea of the size of it there. Um, that's the beginning. And this is how much I had left. That's my ankle. Bring my chair back. That was how much I had left at the end. I literally had enough to do the last stitch and that was it. I didn't have to chop that off. That was the end of the yarn. And the yarn is um, sort of selvages of wool. Um, I am very aware that um, my camera does not focus very well on um, fine details. Um, like some of the, some people have got really nice cameras to do their podcast and when they show like a skein of yarn or something close up it kind of zooms in and focuses. Well, um, I thought I'd do a few podcast episodes to see how I enjoyed doing it and see how I got on before buying a, an actual proper camera so I just use my computer at the moment. So I am actually saving up to buy a new camera. That's totally gone off the subject of the rug, but hopefully in maybe f three or four more podcasts in the future, um, hopefully I'll be using um, a bit of a better camera. We'll see. But anyway, for now, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So this is the rug, and I absolutely love it. It's really squishy. Um, they're the ends. You can see how thick it is. And it's really, really squishy and bouncy to sit on. Um, it's really warm because it's wool, so it's going to look beautiful on the, on the down on the carpet somewhere. I think I'll put it in my living room, or I could put it under my desk to put my feet on, but then it's not really going to get. Nobody's going to see it there apart from me. Or maybe I'll put it out on my landing. Because um, like I say, I think Charlie's going to want to lay on this, and I don't mind, that's okay if she wants to lay on it. She's been eyeing it up already. But I love the way, I'm really happy with the way the colours are all in one colour section now, um, instead of individual stripes, because that was just too... not not really me. Um, I like stripes, usually just two colour stripes, but it was a bit too crazy for me, the way I'd done it before, so... I'm just, I'm really proud of myself for reusing something as well, instead of just getting rid of it. I pulled it all down, um, made the yarn even better and then, um, well modified it a bit, took out the stringy bits basically, yeah, and then knitted it with a much more, I've knitted it with single crochets instead of double crochets, which means when I pull it, it's still quite dense fabric. Um, and before, I think I've done it with double crochets all the way around and it was really holy as well, so. Yes, I'm really pleased with that. I love it. Shall I put it on the floor behind me? I'm just gonna... There we go. Excellent. Maybe that's where it'll go. I just need to stitch that that little end in there. Um, anyway, I'm very proud of myself for that as well. So, once again, that is the power of having podcasting friends who show their interest in, in seeing what you're doing. Um, yeah, it makes you want to work on them so that you've got something to show, so brilliant. Um, and then the other thing I've been really busy with for the last two weeks, 
is sewing. Um, I've been making project bags. Um, I showed a couple, I'm just looking at them now, in my previous podcast. I don't know if I showed this one because I've made a few in the last few weeks because I'm considering, well I wanted more for myself, I am still in the considering stages of um, whether or not to make some and sell them on Etsy. I think I will do that. Um, but I'm just trying to... Uh, I didn't download a pattern or anything, I just drew a pattern myself. So it's really simple, it's a drawstring bag. Um, the ones I'm going to show you are just, they're mine. But basically, if I do make some to sell, they'll be in that style. Um, and they'll just be small basic ones to start with, just to see how I get on doing it. Um, so I don't know if I showed you this one, but it's a, I think I might have done actually. You may have seen this one, so I won't go too far. I won't show you it for too long, but it's got a linen mix with a vintage lace. In fact, as I'm showing you it, I think I did. I think I remember showing you it before. And just some, this is just some like cotton lace trim that I use for the drawstring. And Tilda lining. And that's got, that's got my Andrea shawl in it. So yeah, so that's holding a full shawl pattern, uh, a full shawl project. Well, it's only a small shawl, but, um, and I can get that skein in there as well. So um, yeah, I'm holding a shawl project in that one. It's kind of a bit wonky. So that's the one that I think I've already shown you. And then, um, how many more have I made? I've got two more, kind of two, kind of three. Um, there's this, well, I'll show you this one first. I've just used stash fabric, so I haven't bought any new fabric for this, just stuff that's in my basket. I've got a basket of fabric, who is is, um, and a cupboard full that's behind me, but this is like my really nice, pretty fabric. Um, so I chose some fabric out of there. And the next one I made was this one. Um, I can't remember, it's a drawstring one. I can't remember what the brand of fabric is, unfortunately. Um, I just got it from a craft shop. I think it's like a quilting one. Is it Moda? No, don't know. No, not sure. And um, I did a dotty, a red dotty lining for that one. That is Tilda fabric. The red dotty fabric's the Tilda fabric. So um, basically, the style of bag I really like is it's not stiff. Um, I haven't used any light, um, interfacing or anything between the two layers, between the lining and the main fabric. I quite like my bags to be um, quite floppy, like that. I don't know why. I think it's because it reminds me of my PE bag when I was little. I'm not sure. That doesn't mean I wouldn't like a lined one or a zippy one or one of a different style, but. Um, I just really love these drawstring bags. You throw something in them, you just drawstring them up, and then you can chuck it in your bag. Um, same as all the, all the other project bags, actually. But um, And then I finally worked out how to do this double drawstring, because on the ones I made before, I just had one side that pulled, and all you have to do is thread two lots of drawstrings through, one one side, one the other. <laughs> Didn't know that before. I had to Pinterest it. Um, but I spent quite a bit of time last week working out how to do, um, put the lining in and make it really neat, get the measurements right and make sure I haven't got any frayed bits coming loose here at the parts where your drawstrings are coming through because they're the sort of, a, they're going to get a lot of wear and tear and they could be vulnerable to um, you getting frayed bits or exposed edges of fabric. So anyway, I've I worked quite hard with sort of pattern cutting paper and made a paper one first to get my head around how to attach this all together um, and do it quickly and efficiently as well because if I am going to make and sell them um, I needed to have a good method of making them um, which was simple, really um, really simple um, but which resulted in a really well made um, bag hopefully, anyway I'm not blowing my own trumpet but I, I wanted to try to make it as, as well as I could do. So anyway, um, yeah, you can't really see very well. <laughs> and the drawstring is, uh, for that one, I've just used some bias binding because it's just for me. 
And I thought, oh, I just, I wouldn't use that on one that I sold, but do you know what? I really love it. It's strong, it's flexible, um, and it's really slidey. Um, technical word. So you can open and close the bag really easily. Um, so yeah, so that's one of my project bags. There's no label on that one um, because that's just for me. I did get some labels because if I do sell them on, on Etsy, I will want my loop and bar name on, my label on. So, um, oh, you can see the back of that. Um, what can I put it on? Oh, well, I'll just show you it on the bag. Um, so I got some labels. Um, that's just one strip. You, you can get the, you can just order those off the internet if you just put in woven labels. There's loads of companies that do woven or printed labels, so those are woven ones. Um, and then this bag, I'll show you in a second, because the fabric I used for, I think, what is one of my favourite bags, um, is that fabric. And I've got this dress out to show you. It's kind of a past-finished sewing object that I wanted to show you purely because it's linked to the fabric that I've used to make the bags with. Um, and you can probably see that I've got some more of it here. Not very much, a very limited amount. Um, and I got that, oh gosh, about five, maybe five or six years ago. Um, I bought it, I ordered it from the US from Spoonflower, um, which is, if you don't already know, it's a really great website. You can go on there and you can look through all the different designs, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, of probably thousands of designs. Um, you can upload your own designs for fabric as well and sell the designs that way. Um, but you can choose, um, there's just so much, so many different types of fabric you can choose, different types of repeat, um, you can have a selection of different fabrics. So uh, I've got mine on, well it's cotton, but it's just dress weight cotton anyway. Um, so. I ordered quite a bit of that at the time to make my dress with, which is that. Um, but I've got some left over. So I've made a couple of bags out of it. I'll show you the dress first though, because it's like a past sewing object. It's like a, I'm cheating a bit with the FO is using a past sewing object. <laughs> I don't know why I did that funny walk then. <laughs> I just saw that as I did it. <laughs> oh well, that's it's real, isn't it? It's real life. Um, so, this is a tea dress that I made a few years ago. Um, it's a self-drafted pattern. And, oh, oh, it's come off the hanger. Oh well, that's, so we don't need the hanger then. Self-drafted pattern, um, it's fitted. It's got straps, but they're, they're sort of falling down. Oops, got little spaghetti straps. It doesn't look very good with my knitted vest on under, underneath it. Of course, I wouldn't normally wear that. It would go about there. Anyway, it's like a tea dress. I know I wear this if I get invited to a wedding. If I stand back, you can see it. Yeah. Can't see it too well, can you? But it's got pockets in it. Um, I love dresses with pockets in. So I put pockets in that one. I've got a few more that I made. Those ones hanging up. Um, they're in Liberty fabrics, uh, but this one's in the bird. That's beautiful bird fabric. I love bird fabrics. So anyway, I got the two birds on the front there. And at the back, it's a bit of a lower back compared to the front. It's hard to show you because it flops down anyway. Yeah, so it's a bit of a lower back. It comes to about sort of there, just where your bra line would normally be, um, with a concealed zip. Oh, yeah. I haven't done a very good pattern matching on the back. I didn't really know very much about that at the time. And then, oops, it's all a bit wrinkly. I've worn this and washed it and then haven't ironed it because I don't do ironing unless I actually need to. So, oh, I should have ironed it to show you. That's really bad. Never mind. Um, anyway, the, the lining just goes to the bodice and it's hand stitched there, which you can't see. Oh, yeah, you might be able to see. Yeah, I'll stop saying you can't see because you can see it a little bit. And it's got one of my old labels in. I used to have a different name when I was doing sewing. Um, I used to kind of sew under a different label, but I changed all of that when I did the knitting podcast. So um, I was going to sell these at one point, but they, well, unless I sell them for £200 <laughs> each, there's just no point in doing it because it's two days of work to make it. 
um, it's pleated. And all the seams are overlocked um, in, and finished nicely. And the lining's top stitch, it's faced so with that lining and it's top stitched in just there. So anyway, yeah, I usually get that dress out if I'm going to a wedding or um, I think I wore that yellow one to my stepmum's 60th party. That back there. Maybe I'll show those another day. Um, yeah, they're my posh dresses. So, had some of that fabric left over. It's not enough to make um, another garment with. Not enough to make curtains or anything like that with. I would have loved curtains out of that fabric. But it's enough to make some project bags with. So, here is one of the project bags I made. What have I got in there? I can't, I can show you a bit inside. It's got my mystery whip in it. Anyway, there's the front of it. So we've got that linen on the bottom, a little bit of, I think that's just linen trim, lace trim, um, the birds, the beautiful birds, it's the same front and back. It takes up quite a bit of fabric because it's a large repeat and if you want the front and the back to be the same and you want the birds to be central, which you do really, you wouldn't want to chop any bits off, um, you get a lot of sort of waste but I think that anything I choose to make out of what I've got left would be the same thing. It would be the same, um, uh, what's the word? It, um, I know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. But there's always going to be a little bit of waste, really, when you've got a big fabric repeat. But I'm sure I'll use the, the scraps of your um, fabric for something different anyway. Um, and I think that's tilde fabric on top. I fancied doing... Um, a different colour for the drawstring casing and then inside I lined this one with the linen which is a bit quite heavy weight I liked the pe the plain look of it I like the fact that it was um, a slightly heavier weight because if you've got your knitted needles in there it makes the bag a bit sturdier the only thing is um, I had to fiddle around with the size of the lining um, it was coming out too big and then the whole thing looked lumpy and baggy um, just because the fabric inside was bulkier than the outer fabric so I did, had to do a bit of jiggling around with that one but there we go um, have I put my label on that? yes, I put my label on that one so I'm not selling this one this actual one because it's mine but I put a label on because it was a test, proper test run so I just wanted to see how my label would work um, so I've stitched that on the front there I wanted to see if I preferred it flat or as a little tab um, and I think um, I like it flat on these ones and then I just used a bit of cotton lace that I had in my stash again just for the where's the best way to show you there you go just for the drawstring so that's got my mystery whip so you'll see that one again in a minute um, put it down there so I love that bag, I absolutely love it. And then I've got another one that I made. Again, I've done the same lining. Um, the only difference is that this is plainer and I put the birds a little bit further down because I realized that I put the birds a bit higher up and then when you do the drawstring, well, it looks quite cute, like they're having a little kiss, actually. Actually, it's okay on the other side. I was gonna say, you don't see the birds because they all get scrunched up, but because I've got this bag full, you still can see the birds. So that's okay. But on this bag, I haven't done, I've just got to insert the drawstring on this, so you'll just see it flat. There's my label at the bottom. Um, I did a really plain one. Oh, Charlie's here. Hey, Charlie. Checking out the rug. <laughs> Checking out the rug. Charlie, you got to lay on the rug. Are you? Oh, go on then, you got to lay on the rug. You can be on the podcast. I bet she's going to lay on it. <laughs> Straight onto the rug. Yep. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Is that yours now? I think that's Charlie's rug now. Told ya. <laughs> um, right, okay, so the difference is 
it's a uh, is it the same size? It's the same size. I didn't put a bottom bit on, as you can see, and I didn't put a top bit on. I did line it. I just lined it with that linen again, and um, with the grey linen. I don't think this one's going to be for sale, but because it's still a, another trial test run, and, and I'm not entirely sure it's completely perfect because I'm not sure the linen, the, the lining was the exact, well, the right size, although I don't know, looking at it now it does look okay. We'll have to wait and see. It's the, the it's stitched but okay, I'm happy with the way of the um, quality of how I've made it. Um, I just wasn't sure if I've made the, the lining exactly the right size. I'm waffling. Anyway, so that's another one that's a bit more basic. Also, I just wanted to see how long it would take me to make a really plain one um, versus one with a few more elements. You have to sort of stitch these elements together a little bit more before you start it. So just a bit of experimenting really. So project bags, yeah! Um, hopefully I'm going to have some more similar ones over the next few weeks. I'm not going to put a time scale on it and I don't want to put myself under pressure. Um, but if I do make some more and I'm happy with them and I decide them to sell them on um, Etsy, I shall tell you about them in the podcast and just show you a few of the examples on the podcast before I put them on Etsy. Um, so yes, I'm excited about that. Um, I do, I really want to do that. And I have got some lovely uh, um, fabrics that I'm looking forward to using to make a few more including some of that Liberty fabric there from that dress. Um, I think that would make a, a really, really nice. I've got some more of that as well, which I made that project bag with. I've got enough to probably do one more project bag, I think, with that. Have I? Anyway, there'll be a couple more bird ones. So, I don't know. If you would be interested to know when I, if and when I do make some more and um, put them on Etsy, um, let me know. I'm not, I, I don't mean, I'm, I'm not going to take any orders, I don't, um, custom orders, I just mean it'd be nice to get some feedback on the idea um, if you thought that they were nice and um, yeah, anyway, I suppose I'll find out if I put them on Etsy and if they sell or not, so anyway, that's the project bags, I'm really pleased with those, just going to have a little drink. Um, I've just, I just checked my phone. I had to check my phone. I just have to keep my eye on it because um, Avion is on his own this weekend, um, on his own working. He's milking the cows and he did say he might need me to go and help him, but he thinks he was going to be okay. He thought he was going to be okay. Um, brilliant English there, okay. <laughs> Um, but I said I keep my phone on on me, um, and if he rings, I might have to go and help him get the cows in. So it means putting my wellies on and walking after the cows just to get them to go to the parlour because they can be a little bit slow on a warm day like this. Um, they were yesterday, um, but hopefully they're feeling a bit better today because it's a bit of a cooler breeze. Um, so and it's. 20 past four now, so I'm guessing he's okay and he hasn't run. So if the phone goes off, I might have to do a little pause and come back, we'll see. Um, I keep taking big breaths as well because I've got a bit of hay fever, kind of. Um, I've said this in a podcast in one of the previous ones. Since I've moved onto the farm, um, I've developed a bit of a um, sort of allergy kind of thing and um, it just means I have to take a big deep breaths every so often as well. I don't get quite as much oxygen in. I think it's because my nose is a bit swollen and bunged up. So yeah. And because I talk a lot and quite fast. <laughs> I have to take a big gulp of air so every so often. Um, anyway. So um, yesterday, this is just a little tiny bit about gardening um, because I'm already at 55 minutes, totally failed. Um, in my plan to make this shorter um, because I've still got a couple more things to show you. Anyway, I'm just going to do it. Did a bit of gardening yesterday. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous weather. Had a massive brainwave. I've got a big piece of um, bare soil um, that I 
I, well, it was grass, and over the winter I put a big old piece of carpet on it. Um, are you going under there now? I'm just going to go somewhere cooler, under the desk. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> Charlie did a growl. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. She does that all the time. Um, distracted by the dog there. So uh, anyway, in my garden, this is just a very quick gardening section, then I'm going to get back onto a bit of knitting again. Um, I covered over a patch of grass, it's about, the whole thing is about 10 metres square that I, that I covered the grass over to kill it off and to create a flower bed and half of that I have now planted with lupins because I've always wanted a big massive lupin bed, I love them, I think they're beautiful um, and I sowed a few of those seeds last year and they're, start, they're really big and they're, I've got half a lupin bed now so they're doing really well but the other half of the bed, um, just barren bare soil um, and I realised it was going to cost me a lot of money if I go to the garden centre to and buy the plants to fill out this garden, this flower bed and I love cottage garden flowers, that's my kind of thing so and um, I just had this brainwave the day before yesterday why don't I just get one of those wildflower seed mixes because I love flowers that are good for the bird, for the bees and the butterflies and uh, wildlife as well. Um, we've got, it's not ours, we've got um, one of the local villagers, Gethin, Gethin Cluid, comes um, to the estate, um, I live on, a far, on an estate, it's not ours, um, but the owners live on the estate. And in their beautiful garden grounds, they've got absolutely lovely gardens, um, they've got beehives. And it's one of the villagers, Gethin, whose bees are living in the beehive. So we get the honey from that. And he sells it in the pub, which is brilliant. So we like to get the honey from him. And I like to think that I'm feeding his bees. Um, so I'm eating the honey that comes basically from my own garden. Anyway... Long story short, not really, because I've just waffled on, but I couldn't find in my local farm store yesterday um, a box full of those wildflower seeds. So the packets of seeds were only 99p, so I just got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six packets of seeds. I'm just going to show you what they are, and I mixed them all together in a box, um, mixed them all together into some compost, and scattered them over my piece of uh, flower bed and then put a load of netting on sticks over it to stop the chickens from going there and ruining it. So this is what's going to be growing. Well, hopefully anyway. Um, Cosmos, I've tried to pick cottage, cottage um, annuals, flowers, uh, plants that are gonna flower in, in one year. So hopefully I'll have these quite soon. So Cosmos, love in a mist. I love this flower, it's so lovely. Some more lupins. These actually are a biannual. What it says on the packet is if you sow, sow them this year, they'll flower next year. But in my experience, if you sow them early enough and the weather's right, they might actually flower the same year. So I'll either get them this year or next year. But I've got a load of lupins already. Um, stocks, beautiful. Hopefully if they grow, I'll be able to cut some of those and put them in a vase as well. Good old lovely poppies. Now, if nothing else grows, I'm sure they will, because poppies grow everywhere. And then my favourite, one of my favourites, these are all my favourites, but I grow this every single year. Um, it's night scented stock, and the flowers actually close up and the plant looks a little bit dead during the day, but that won't matter when it's among all the other flowers. But in the evening, at dusk, the, you get this beautiful um, petals that open out and the most absolutely gorgeous scent um, and I think it's because the animal that feed, the insect that feeds on those are moths rather than daytime insects. So they open up and release their scent at night time, uh, uh, in the evening and through the night. So if you walk into your garden, if you've been out for the evening and you come home and you've got that in your garden, you get this beautiful scent um, in the evening and I love it. So fingers crossed for me because... I've prepared the soil, I've done a lot of work with that, I've put some new compost into it as well. Um, I spent a lot of time preparing the area. I put netting, 
with some stakes. So I've got like a square sort of cage of netting over it. And it rained about an hour after I sowed the seeds. It rained for quite a while yesterday. Well, I say quite an hour, but it was lovely warm summer rain. It's brilliant, just in time for my seeds. Not great because Avion was doing the silage yesterday, um, but good for my seeds. Um, the only factor that could ruin everything is slugs. And I'm not going to put slug, slug pellets down because um, I don't like using them. Um, I'm just a bit scared that Charlie will eat them, the chickens will eat them. Hedgehogs, I always think of hedgehogs, I love hedgehogs. And they might eat them or eat the slugs that have died from the slug pellets. So I don't use them. Um, and I don't like to use them because I think they're, yeah, they're not so good for wildlife. But I've heard of nematodes and you can get packets of these nematode things that I think you put it in your watering can and water it onto the flower bed and it's a natural predator. I don't know what happens, how it works. I think they just come to life <laughs> once you water, put water on them or something. It's a bit weird, but anyway, that introduces a natural little bug into the ground, which will kill your slugs for you, but they won't hurt anything else. So I'm going to try that because there's nothing more soul destroying than seeing your beautiful little seedlings that you've spent ages looking after completely eaten in one evening by slugs. That's always awful. So wish me luck with my flower bed. Um, I shall be putting some photos of that on my blog. Um, I've got a section in the blog in the menu bar called the Lupin Bar Garden. So um, I'll put some photo updates of that there. Um, that was probably longer than I wanted to spend talking about the garden because it's a knitting podcast. But anyway, just wanted to show you those because that's what I did yesterday. Um, new things, quickly, I really wanted to show you this last week and didn't because I spoke for too long. So I treated myself about three or four weeks ago to some new knitting needles. I did a bit of research on the internet because it's quite a big um, investment. I really wanted to have a set of circulars because I had a few Knit Pro um, circulars and a few cables. They were getting a bit... Um, one of them had broken, the threads had come, the little metal thing had fallen off. One of them, the threads had gone so it wouldn't screw into the cable anymore. So I ended up having to super glue it on which made it a not, not an interchangeable needle anymore. It just became a fixed one. Um, I actually, do you know what? I got a splinter from one of them. It was from one of the cubics though. Um, and then I'd, I knitted the Fidra hat that I showed, Fidra hat, or um, something like in my first, or, or maybe I showed it in my last podcast. Anyway, I knitted that on an Addy. Um, nickel? Is it nickel? You'll see in a minute. Um, and I loved it. I loved the feel of that um, knitting needle. So I decided to get a new set of needles and that they will be the metal sort of nickel plated ones and I did a bit of research and I read the most brilliant review where um, crafts from the kutch, no, no, how do you say it, yes, not kutch, kutch, it's Welsh, crafts from the, I'm going to put it here, <laughs> on this website I will do a link um, to this as well in the show notes which I will definitely do this time. I don't know if I've put them up for the last podcast, but um, here you can find a brilliant review if you're pondering um, as to whether to get some Addy Clicks, because that's what I ended up getting. Um, lace, it's the Addy Lace Clicks circular set. Um, and she, I've forgotten her name, sorry to who it is, but she, um, she made the comparison, a direct comparison between those and the Knit Pros, which is brilliant because that's what I already had so perfect I couldn't have found a better review and she reviewed them really favorably so I got them and it came in a really bright pink this is not really my if there were if there was a choice of like duck egg blue I would have had that <laughs> or charcoal gray I wouldn't have chosen a cerise pink I don't not like it don't dislike it at all but um it just looks like a big pink handbag to me. But anyway, that's that's fine. I'm, I still like it. It's fine. And then inside, whoop, I've, I've got post-it notes. I put those there. They didn't come with the set. Um, whoops. Oh, and I've put that in there. That doesn't come with the set. 
I should hold this. I've added a couple of things in, look, they don't come with a set. And I'm using some of the needles, so they're not all in there, but the needles come in a little holder thing. And there's the extension if I want to make one of the cables longer. Um, and that will just fold up. I just, I really love the idea of having a case to put my circulars in. It makes everything so much neater as well, and it clicks, clicks shut. It is like a little clutch bag, isn't it? And then in the back, there's a zip there. I ordered a few extra cables, but you get the cables with it as well. Um, you can keep your cables. And there we are. I got a few of those. And as you've seen, you might have seen on the projects that I've showed you today, I'm using some of this set already on the two shawls that I'm, that I'm knitting with. Um, and what I love about these, I'll show you with a large needle. If you don't already know and you haven't used these, instead of having to screw it in using a screw with threads, which is, for example, like the Knit Pro or lots of other um, brands of needle, it's got um, it, there are no threads. If I had a proper camera, you'd be able to see that really well, but you push it and click it and then it's in and it's brilliant. And then you push it in and turn it and it comes out again. Um, there's a little tiny mechanism, little click mechanism in there. I might sneeze in a second, sorry if I do. It might go away. Normally I hate it if a sneeze goes away. I, I always want that sneeze, but I don't want to sneeze on the podcast. <laughs> So hopefully it won't come. Anyway, love those needles, love the cables. I wanted something that had a slightly more flexible cable to the Knit Pro, and I do think they are a little bit more flexible than the Knit Pros. Um, I would still like to try the higher, higher sharps. I might it buy one, um, not a set. That would be way too expensive. I've just bought all of that, but I would like to try one circular high, higher sharp, maybe for when I do my socks. Um, just because I've heard a lot of good stuff about them too, but I love those needles. I'm getting on really well with them. Um, so I'm really happy with those. So that was a new acquisition. Um, what was it? Oh yeah. Now I had some yarn to show you, but it's gone way over again. So that will have to wait. Um, <laughs> I said this last week about this exact same yarn. I'm not going to cast on with it yet, probably at least till I do the next podcast anyway, so that's fine. You're not missing out on anything. Sorry, it's because I ramble a lot, but I'll show you the mis... No, I won't. I'll show you the mystery whip last. We'll end on the mystery whip. Um, I'll show you my favourite object from my house. And it's linked to another podcaster. And at the same time, I'm going to give her a shout out because I think she's absolutely fabulous. Um, I have... There's a bit of a story behind this as well. Um, I actually used to be this person's pen friend when we were back in the sixth form college. So back when we were like 16, how old are you in sixth form? 16, 17, 18? I don't know. She might be able to correct me. I think that's when we first started um, being pen pals. We found, um, I put an advert in, um, I used to get a magazine that was um, a pet magazine all about pets I think it was oh, all about animals oh my god and she must have got the same magazine because that's she answered my ad for a pen pal there was a page in there where you could get um you could advertise yourself to I don't think you'd be allowed to do that now <laughs> um, it's probably too dangerous or something but anyway um yeah back then uh, you know as, as a well I might have even been younger but anyway you could put a little ad in and, and look for a pen pal. And I got this response um, from this person. She's pro if she's watching this podcast, she's going to know who she is right now. Um, and then we wrote to each other for a few years, a couple of years maybe, um, as I remember it. And we used to send each other cool things like sweets and little bits and bobs. Like she sent me a really lovely necklace that she made with some beads once and uh, a pillowcase. I've still got that with some of her native animals on it. I haven't brought it to show. I've still got that, I use it. I still use it and it's faded, but you can still see the animals on it. I love it. I absolutely love that pillowcase. Um, 
and various other things yeah from just stuff that yeah stuff that we were interested in we used to do that so back all the way back then we were doing swaps <laughs> um, and letters and stuff which is a bit like what we all do now on the podcast isn't it um, but it wasn't really ever um, orientated towards textiles because I don't know about her but at me at the time I hadn't really um, I wasn't really into knitting and sewing um, I did it as a small child then didn't do it for years and then picked it up again later on so very massive coincidence um, roll forward a few years so we wrote to each other on and off for a, a couple of years and then we didn't and then I think we did for a little bit more and then it petered out probably when we both went to university and then roll forward to, I don't know, a few months ago, six months ago, something like that. Um, I don't know why, I just thought, she popped into my head and I thought, I was thinking about that time when I used to write to her and I thought, do you know what, we've got Facebook now, I'm going to just put her name in Facebook and see if she's there. I found her and not only did I found, find her, but she did a podcast, a knitting podcast and crochet um, and was totally into knitting and crochet, same as me, and all of that sort of stuff, textiles. Couldn't believe it, so I messaged her, and she remembered who I was. Um, and that was brilliant, I was so excited! And, um, and since then, we... I don't know how, I didn't notice this straight away when I first got in contact with her, because I knew she had a blog, and I was looking at her blog, um, and subscribed to that. But I didn't realise that she had a podcast until uh, month, six weeks ago, something like that. Not that long ago, anyway. Um, I must have somehow missed this on Instagram. I don't think I was into Instagram yet. I'm quite still quite new to Instagram. And then I saw she posted on Instagram one of those um, like p images where it says new episode of podcast. And I was like, oh my god, you've got a podcast. So um, I started watching that and I realised how totally much she was really kind of into the same things as me in terms of textiles so um so that's my absolutely brilliant lovely new podcast that I love to watch I didn't get into watching it until um like the last two weeks because um the computer I was trying to watch the podcast on the sound wasn't very good and the sound on the podcast is perfectly fine especially on my computer um so I wasn't able to watch it previously until now so I've been sitting here in the evenings, doing a bit of knitting and watching her absolutely wonderful, brilliant podcast. And her podcast is called What Shara Made. Um, hi, Shara. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be mentioning Shara, actually, and saying hello properly, because um, it will be the first time I've actually spoken. I know I'm not speaking to you, but um, you know what I mean, saying hello sort of live. So... Hello, all the way from the UK. Um, I can't believe I've still got something that you sent me years and years and years and years ago, and I'm going to show it because it's one of the favourite things that I have in my house. I don't know how well it's going to show up on the screen. I might just have to describe it, actually. I've not even tried this, but it's a photograph that Shara sent me that she took. Um, in, I'll show it first, and then I'll take it out the frame because it's got the date written on it. She might not remember doing it. It was a bit of a glare. It's a footprint, a child's footprint in the sand. Um, and as I remember, at the time, Shara was really, really into her photography. Um, and funnily enough, that's what I did for my degree. Um, I've got a degree in graphic arts and design. And I ended up doing uh, my degree show um, was all photographic work. So another coincidence, really. Um, fun I don't know why I haven't got a decent camera. My cameras are film cameras, that's why. That's why I'm saving up for a digital one. But anyway, here's her photo. I've taken it out of the frame. Um, and I just loved it. And I kept it all these years. And on the back is her writing. And it says, This is a small child's footprint in the sand at Wilson's Prom 2002. So there you go, Shara. I don't know if you remember ever taking that or sending it to me. But um, quite a few years ago you did. <laughs> And I've still got it, and I've got it in a little frame, uh, and it's usually on my mantelpiece. So that's one of my favourite objects from around my house, um, just because it reminds me of such a lovely, lovely, lovely person. And her podcast 
Shara's podcast is, I'll say again, what Shara made. Um, I can't remember which episode she's on. Have you done 19? Oh, I thought that's a guess. All right, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, it's not 50 and it's not four. <laughs> it's not even 40 and I don't even think it's 30. It's below that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but anyway, Shara's done, she's done quite a few podcasts already. And it's the most calming and soothing podcast ever, ever to watch. And I'm just, I'm kind of sat there. I can do some knitting while I'm listening and watching Shara doing her podcast because it's so calming and soothing. Um, um, but most of all, it makes me feel as if like when I was little and I was at primary school, this is what I love about it. She's got the most beautiful, soothing, lovely, kind voice and face. And it makes me feel like I'm back at primary school with my favorite teacher um, and they're reading you a story at the end of the day. I love it. I think I could sit and watch her podcast if it was like three hours long. I would love it. So <laughs> love your podcast, Shara. And I'm looking forward to the next one episode coming out. So I just watched her most recent one last night. Um, Shara is in Australia. So we used to send things really far to each other. She's in Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne? How do you say it? Melbourne in Victoria. And she does um, knitting, crochet. She's a really generous person. She's really kind and generous. And I think she does quite a bit of knitting for charity as well as her own um, designs and her own knitting um, for herself. Um, she does quite a bit of charity knitting. Um, so anyway, so she does knitting, crocheting, um, weaving, spinning. I love her. I love all her work, but I love her spinning. She spins some beautiful, really beautiful yarn. And um, I always love to see what she's been up to with her spinning. Hand dyeing um, of yarn. She does that. Um, and she's on Etsy. She has an Etsy shop and I just looked before I did the podcast and she's currently got patterns on the Etsy shop. So I don't know if at other points, if there's anything else for sale on there. Um, but uh, certainly there are some crochet and I think maybe knitting patterns um, on Etsy. So have a look there. And she's got a website as well. And she's on Ravelry. So uh, her website and her Etsy shop are Shara Lambeth Designs. So that's really worth having a look and definitely, definitely check out her podcast. She's really funny as well, but not in a kind of trying to be funny way. She'll just tell you a story about something that's happened to her. And I'm really sorry, Shara, but I, I really laughed at the Micah Pie story. <laughs> I think I, I messaged her and said, I felt a bit awful. And Antonella said the same thing because she watches the podcast. And we really laughed at the Micah Pie story because it was really, really funny, but it must have been horrible at the time. Um... <laughs> But the way she tells it is just hilarious. So, yeah, anyway. There you go. That's my podcast recommendation for this week. So it's the What Shara Made podcast. And she is a fabulous, fabulous person. Um, and I can't recommend her podcast enough. So go and check it out. Um, right, quickly, very quickly, Mystery Whip. Because this is the longest podcast I've actually ever done. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything that I can edit out. Because I really want to show you everything that I've talked about. So, um, oh, don't show the pattern, Kate. Nearly showed you the pattern, which would have made it a not with mystery whip at all. Let me just empty out the things, the things I need. Okay, so it's in my, oh, it's in the bottom. It's in my, my bag, my new loop and bar bag. This is what I've got so far. It's on the Addy Circulars. Okay, so the first part of the, of this project, um, this is the main body uh, when I say body, I don't mean that it's um, necessarily a garment. Um, that's not giving you a clue as to what the finished object's going to be. I just mean the main part um, of, the, of the knitting. It's done in two pieces, identical. And I'm using, I'll show the yarn in it. So, and it's, a, it's in a teal colour, like a peacock. In fact, I think that's the name of the colour, peacock. So two pieces which um, are now being knitted together across the top. And what happens next is I'll be joining on a new colour. Okay, so you can roughly see the sort of size. It's plain stockinette up to there. 
There's a, couple, a, bit, a little bit of garter at the bottom, just a couple of rows. So you work on those two individually and then you knit them all together at the top, um, not wanting to give anything away about the pattern actually, I should be careful, yeah. And the next colour I'm going to put on is this sort of rust, what's it called? Don't know, doesn't say, hmm. sorry, doesn't say, um, I can't remember, I know that one's called Peacock but it's Jameson's, I'm knitting it in the Jameson's, I love this. Um, Shetland Spindrift. I love, love, love this yarn. I absolutely love it. I used it near Christmas to do some colour work. Um, so I really, really wanted to use it again. And I've got so many different colour choices. I knew that on the, I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm not using the same yarn that's in the pattern, um, but I'm using exactly the colours as far as I could match them to the pattern, to the, per, the designer. So this is exactly as it would appear on the pattern if you were to see it on Ravelry, for example, or wherever. Okay, so that's the first bit. On my circulars. With my mystery whip. So that's Peacock. All Spindrift. That's the Peacock. And these are the other three colours. Um, I can't remember what they're called. I think that one might be called Pine Forest or something like that. Um, I'll have to tell you that next time. I'll write it down. But it's a teal blue, that one. A, whoops, a rusty red. Sort of rusty orange. A really deep, deep pine forest green, upside down. And a really beautiful mix um, of browns. That's one of the things I love about this yarn, Shetland. Um, spin drift is that uh, some of the colourways are two colours spun and applied I think yeah I love them I want a cardigan out of not these colours but out of Shetland spin drift so oh my computer went off there now this might give it a little bit away I'm not sure but this is also in the pattern this is not the sort of yarn I would normally buy at all but it's totally required I'll just give a really quick glimpse because I don't know if it's going to give anything away <laughs> it's a novelty yarn. Um, it's King Cole Moments, that one. Again, it's not the exact yarn that was specified in the pattern, but it's it does the same thing. So, there's my mystery whip. Um, whether I'll have finished it next week, next by next podcast, or I'll show you a bit more as a, a clue, maybe I will, and then the following podcast I'll show you that, it will reveal the finished object, I don't know, but anyway, if you want to have a go at guessing what you think it is, feel free, come over to Ravelry, and um, I haven't got a Ravelry group, I'm debating whether to have one or not, maybe, maybe soon I will, um, I'm not sure if I've quite got the time to be able to commit to it and, and man it and kind of give it all my attention, that's the only thing that's stopping me from doing it so far, but um, I might, I might have a Ravelry group. Maybe I'll do it for the next podcast, I'm not sure. But you can message me on Ravelry or you can put a comment um, in, in the YouTube um, comments bit. So if anybody wants to have a little guess, um, make a suggestion as to what they might think it is, or you might not want to bother with that, you might just want to wait and see what it turns out to be. So um, anyway, so that is everything I do believe. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I really hope I haven't. I just had to miss one thing out because it's it's just gone way too long now. That's my record. That is one hour and twenty four minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I could. I really will try to make my next one um, shorter. I think I'll try really, really hard. You see, if I actually manage to do it in one week's time instead of two weeks' time, it will probably be shorter because I'll have a bit less to talk about. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you if you are, um, if you if you're a returning uh, viewer of the podcast. Thank you so much, um, especially if you've subscribed. Well, just if you've watched it really, but thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the podcast as well. That really means um, a, a really massive amount to me. And if anybody has been over to say hello and to comment, thank you so much because it that's what makes this such a brilliant experience and um, like I say when other podcasters mention you and give you a shout out it's just such a booster and it's such a motivator to a motivator 
I laughed at that because I just thought of Moti Mr. Motivator then from the 80s or whatever, 90s. <laughs> anyway, it's such a motivator to um, for you to keep going with your projects and to um, to get things done. So, um, so thank you to everybody who's um, been interacting and uh, showing an interest in this podcast. It really is fabulous and it means a lot to me. Um, and I hope I'll see you, and thank you to anyone who's watched it who hasn't watched before. If you've got to the end of it, well done, because this is a really long podcast, so sorry about that. Um, so I'll see you next week, I'm going to say. I haven't got anything, might be having a barbecue next week, but that's only on one day, so hopefully I'll do a podcast um, a week today. Let's just see. Um, so thanks for joining me and see you next time. Bye.